Gas fitter exam cram session video six. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, we were talking about gas. Okay. Question 13 The vent pipe for gas pressure regulators shall be designed to prevent the entry of insects? Yes. Definitely a question. Uh, was on the last, uh, the most recent exam. So, let's establish what we're talking about here. A gas pressure regulator. Well, it's a regulator like any other kind of regulator. It's going to take high to low. Uh, you can have a regulator. Um, we're not allowed to have more than 85 psi pressure on the domestic to a unit. If you got more than that, you gotta put a pressure reducing regulator to take the 85 p uh, the pressure above 85 down to 85 or below before you send it to a unit to uh, supply the fixtures, the sinks, the bathtub, etc. Uh, you're running the water from the domestic to feed the boiler. Okay, if you're running a hydronic boiler, you really don't need more than what 12 psi. Uh, your standard uh, uh, pressure reducing regulator valve is uh, set to 15 psi max, uh, even less for steam. You know, if you're running higher than that, you, you, you're doing something wrong. Don't need a lot of pressure for those systems. So, gas is the same thing. Now, we mentioned that uh, we're not going to be running any higher than half psi within the building, you know. But you don't really believe that, you know, Half a PSI is going to uh, push gas from the utility into the street, into those big yellow plastic pipes to feed all these houses and stoves and buildings, etc. You don't really believe that, you know, half a PSI is going to get it there. You're going to need a higher pressure than that. In fact, if you look in the street, whenever they're marking out, you know, they're spray painting because they're going to do some kind of excavating or whatever. And, you know, by law, you got to call at least uh, two days in advance. So they come out, spray paint your whole thing. You know, electric is red. Uh, water is going to be blue. Uh, waste is green. Uh, communications is orange. Gas? Gee, I wonder what color they would spray paint for the gas in the street. Maybe yellow? Yes, yellow. Sometimes, if you're lucky, they'll spray paint and then they'll actually write, you know, main service and then they'll write the poundage and you can see sometimes you'll see the number 15 psi g a lot they're running at least 15 psi in the street just to get the gas to where it's got to go that's a lot of pressure and from that gas in the street that's at 15 psi let's go back again to our cellar all right here's our cellar grade service meter set right the meter sorry okay this out, out in the street we have the main the main they're going to take off a um a service uh one service to this uh to this house this building that's going to be something like 15 psi at the very least that's a great deal of pressure. In fact, now's a good time to point something out because this is another fucking question. You're going to get it. No way around it. High pressure gas is 15 PSI or greater. You hit 15 PSI, you got you some high pressure gas. I make this distinction because this is a very fine wording. It's a matter of semantics. Wording how in and you know wordage semantics how something you know can mean different things just because you happen to phrase it a little different um, I say this because if we look at the mechanical code which is going which uh, amongst other things deals with steam high pressure steam is anything over 15 psi you could have exactly 15 psi in a steam system. That's not high pressure steam. You could have 15.1 psi in a system. Oh, now, we're, now we have high pressure steam. Gas, no. 
And you know, we've, well, everything here says gas is dangerous and we're terrified of it. So yes, 15 PSI, that's high pressure gas and anything above. It starts at the 15. So we got high pressure gas in the street. It's coming in here. It's going to go to the meter. This meter is designed to deal with half a PSI. This meter, I'm gonna say we're, it's strictly for cooking gas. This meter is measuring the amount of gas all the stoves in the building are using. And they're using it at at least half a PSI, more likely as we mentioned before, a quarter PSI, but still, you can't go from 15 PSI to a meter, a delicate calibrated instrument that's only really meant to deal with poundages at, uh, of a half, you can't do that. The 15 is gonna destroy this meter. You gotta have somewhere, somehow, before this meter, you have to have a regulator. The regulator here is going to lower the pressure from 15 to a half, okay? So now, you got half a PSI, okay? This regulator here, is protecting the meter. It's reducing the pressure from 15 to a half. This meter, the one on the service that's bringing the high pressure from the street down to the manageable pressure in the building, half a PSI, this is your MP regulator. The M stands for medium. Medium pressure regulator, okay? The medium pressure regulator is going to reduce it from 15 to a half. Now, since we're on the topic of the regulators, once again, we're going to send it to the stove. The stove is yet another point where we have some delicate, finely calibrated uh, mechanisms inside there it actually can't really handle half a PSI. When you turn on your burners, that's not half a PSI coming out into your blue flame. There is an LP regulator in the appliance itself. Uh, take a guess at what the L is for. Well, this was medium, so this is low. There's a low pressure regulator in the appliance itself that's gonna take the We'll, so we'll call it a, a quarter, a quarter of a PSI. It's going to take the half to a quarter PSI and bring it down even more so that the flame coming out of these is at the perfect pressure, you know, with, it's gonna mix with the air and it's gonna give you the proper flame, okay? So you, you have a medium pressure regulator here there's a low pressure regulator worked into the appliance and outside in the street is high pressure, 15 PSI usually. Okay, so I only take, I only mention these because yes, MP, uh, medium pressure regulator is going to come up uh, later in certain questions, but with all these regulators, um, this one here we're okay because we already have a low pressure here. We're not really worried about anything crazy happening. But this medium pressure regulator here from the 15 to the half, this is a point of issue because, well, everything's fine if the regulator's working like it should, but anything's possible, anything can happen. What if for some reason we get a sudden surge in pressure that maybe overwhelms this regulator a bit? Or what if the regulator itself develops a flaw? such that now we're getting gas escaping in ways that we don't want that to happen, okay? Well, in situations like that, every regulator has a port, and this port allows you to run piping from the regulator to the outside, okay? And you've seen this. Maybe you know what you've seen, you've noticed it, maybe you've seen it but didn't notice it or didn't know what it was, but you've seen this, you're walking along the side of buildings, apartment buildings, and you see little pipes coming up out of what looks like they could be going into the basement or the cellar level. They come up, they're on the wall. By the way, 
The end of it should be at least 18 inches or higher from grade. Another question. And then they end off with a little cap, you know, because there's many different styles of caps, but it's got to be capped off in such a way. Um, you've seen them though, they're little pipes. They're usually maybe like a one inch, three quarter, something like that. You know, for apartment buildings, they could be bigger, but usually, but you know, it's not a huge pipe. You maybe see one, two of them. You see the little cowls or the little vent caps on them. That is the vent to the tapping on the regulator, the vent tapping that if for some reason the diaphragm fails or the unit is overwhelmed in whatever way, any gas that's released is going to go in the vent and out to the open atmosphere. It's not going to start collecting in this enclosed space, which invites issues. So the capping, that cow, that cap, that is supposed to prevent the entry of insects, okay? They're worried that a lot of insects go in there. Uh, wasps like to build nests, the spiders like to make webs. All of this stuff can impede the venting of the gas. In fact, um, if you ever, uh, you know, if you, uh, you ever notice, if you ever take the time to notice or read through your uh, buyer's uh, guides or instruction booklets that come with your uh, grills, your uh, outdoor uh, air fryer, stuff like that, where you got to hook up the propane gas to, you'll notice they say, like, if you're going to keep it outside and for long periods of time, or if you're going to not use it for a while, they say, Check to make sure that the, that the little open piping for the burners and stuff that spiders didn't get in there, hang out and make webs because that's enough to stop the flow of the gas. It builds up a blockage. You build up a big, uh, uh, big cloud of gas in a contained environment. And then while you're going to go get the steaks that you had marinating, all of a sudden you hear boom. Check to make sure that everything's clear can happen to your outdoor air fryer, your grill, it can happen to your regulator in the cellar. These vents prevent that. You checking for spider webs if you haven't used your air fryer for a while prevents that also. But uh, the cows themselves, and you'll see cows should have like a little kind of screening or whatever built into them. It should be small enough to stop the insects, okay? No uh, wasp nets, nests, no uh, dead little insect bodies, no uh, spider whips. Okay, uh, 14. Gas pressure regulator vent terminals shall be a minimum of, oh, we just covered this, 18 inches above grade. 18 inches, numerology. That's a, an extremely popular number. What is 18 inches? Well, it's a foot and a half. Foot is 12 inches, add another six inches, that's 18, that's a foot and a half. 18 inches is a very popular number. You'll see it again and again. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at these answer choices here and I'm going to say, well, a foot is also a popular number. 24 inches is a popular number. 15 inches, that, that's not something that goes easily into your tape measure or your fold ruler. So. All right, I would say 15 definitely does not feel right after you've worked with numbers enough in the code. 15 inches, that, no, it doesn't feel right, you know. Um, the only thing I can remember so far, and let's review, you know, uh, 15, I think 15 was only good when we were dealing with, oh, I know, if we go past 15 feet working on 4-inch gas pipe, we're going to have to purge it, right? Isn't that how it worked? Six feet was 10, four feet was 15, three feet was 30, two and a half was 50, an eight inch. Oh, what was that like with that length? No, trick question, eight inch, doesn't matter. It gets purged no matter what, eight inch or larger, correct? All right, so 18 inches above grade. Um, it's, uh, you know, we're going into other codes, but just to show you how prevalent uh, this number can be and why we like start getting obsessed with numbers you know giving them these magical powers that they really don't have well because it helps us remember it okay uh, stamp um, let's see the uh, uh, fire department connection or the Siamese got to be at least 18 inches above grade 
okay? When you have it outside the wall or if it's freestanding, it's got to be freestanding, 18 inches above grade, right? 18 inches above grade. If we're going outside and we're talking about grade, it's a good chance 18 is going to be the answer, you know? Uh, question 15. Semi-rigid, flexible, metallic tubing used to connect the gas appliance shall not exceed more than six feet in length. Okay. Now, your flexies for the stove are not the only possible flexible connector. There's also like stainless steel tubing uh, specifically designed for very exotic applications of gas. Um, yes, those are also, they will also have to obey the six foot rule, um, but we're not, you're not really dealing with that. But just so you know, it's going, any flexible steel connector, metallic connector, you know, whether it's the flexi for the stove or those exotic stainless steel uh, connections, no more than six feet in length, okay? Uh, page, just quickly, page 102, you're gonna see at the top, your flexible connector, no more than six feet, okay? It's just fancy wordy. We call it flexies, but they like to say semi-rigid flexible appliance connector. Of course, it's going to become metallic. We're not allowed plastic. The only place we're allowed plastic is outside underground. That's it. Outside underground. Otherwise, no plastic. And guess what? Well, if it's outside and underground, well, that's not our problem anymore because you know, anything outside on the ground falls to who? The utility. It's their problem now. Okay, back to... <clears throat> okay. Back to the test. Okay, page six. Question 16. An auxiliary, an auxiliary drain pan shall not be less than three inches larger than the unit. What's an auxiliary drain pan? Okay, oh. let's say for the sake of argument, we have a water heater, right? And we have a water heater installed in a location, a space, whatever you wanna say, where you know what happens to water heaters, right? You start getting close to the 10, you know, um, let's say the five year mark, you know, there's a chance you walk down to the basement and the basement's flooded. Why? The water heater rusted out in the middle of the night and it's all over the place, you know? So that's why your shower was so cold that morning, okay? Your water heater's done for. In the basement, unfinished basement, you'd be fine. You know, you, you got a mess, but okay. If it's anywhere else where, you know, that kind of water is going to cause a major disruption, damage to property, etc. Your water heater is going to have, it's going to sit in a drain pan, okay? All right, and if you like, you know, if you're the kind of person that likes to wear a belt and suspenders, a drain pan can have an auxiliary drain pan, an extra drain pan, okay? Uh, both the drain pans, you'll see in the pictures and theory and things, both of the drain pans, doesn't matter. They have to be at least three inches larger than the diameter of the unit. In this case, it's a water heater. So what does that mean? Three inches on each side? No, three inches larger overall. So whatever this thing was, the pan itself is going to be at least an inch and a half longer, an inch and a half longer on each side, at least, okay? And while we're on the topic, how deep should the pan be? Well, uh, give your uh, intuition a try. See if uh, you're developing a feel yet. Because uh, you might say three, but it, not a bad answer, but it should be at least an inch and a half deep. Okay? Three would have been good, but inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half. Um, I believe there's pictures here in the back. Because uh, for this thing, it's a lot easier if you uh, see for yourself. Uh, let's see. 
No, unfortunately, no picture of that. That's mostly in the. That. That. Is mostly in the. That's mostly a plumbing code thing. But they'll use it for gas. This has been a question. Um, in the meantime, an auxiliary pan shall not be less than three inches larger than the unit. So for this water heater here, whatever this was, this has got to be an inch and a half longer on each side. It's going to be at least an inch and a half deep. The auxiliary pan is going to be the second pan. Should this pan overflow or fail, this pan should have some kind of alarm or whatever. Say that alarm doesn't go off. The excess will go in here, which also has an alarm. So you got two alarms. One of them's got to work. So this is this is the belt. These are the suspenders. You like to wear a belt and suspenders. You know, you're that kind of guy. Well, guess what? The coat is that kind of guy. You got this. You got an auxiliary. Regardless, inch and a, uh, three inches larger uh, than the unit, at least an inch and a half deep. Okay. Um, 17. A vent to the outdoors is not required for a gas pressure regulator equipped with a vent limiting device what is a vent limiting device okay a vent limiting device means if we have a regulator we already know it's got to have a vent okay so a regulator the next time you are working on gas um, you can take a look at it and see that the round thing it regulated just like uh, if you're up if you're working uh, with an oxyacetylene setup and you have to adjust the pressures for your oxygen and acetylene it's round there's a diaphragm in there turning the screw either increases or decreases the pressure exact same principle okay you know and here you screw in your pipe whatever this is the regulator there's a, there's a bossing or a tapping here, and you're going to run your vent. This is your basic setup. This vent, no matter how much gas leaks or escapes, this vent is going to take care of it, okay? But if you have a gas pressure regulator, if you have a regulator that even if gas escapes, or is being relieved in some way, there's a device within the regulator or there's a device equipped onto the regulator that that amount of gas escaping will always be contained to a certain amount that it will never overwhelm the area that it's in. It'll never cause uh, enough of a explosive mixture. Then we don't even need the vent because this regulator with its vent limiting device is actually self-regulating. It's going to relieve pressure to allow the regulator to work properly to uh, avoid creating any hazardous situations. But it's going it, that alone is also going to be limited or regulated by another device so that we don't need the vent. Okay, so. A vent to the outdoors is not required for a gas pressure regulator equipped with a vent limiting device. Okay, so it's a different kind of regulator. It's a self-regulating regulator, so you don't need that. 18. Condensate lines from fuel gas burning appliances shall be at least three quarter inches internal diameter. Okay, not just not just three-quarter piping. Three-quarter piping may be three-quarter inches internal diameter. It may not. Got to check. Okay, if it's three-quarter piping, but it's thick or the three-quarter is measured from the OD, the ID is not going to be the same. No, they want a full three-quarter, you know, a full port. You know, it's three-quarters on the inside. Condensate lines from fuel burning gas appliances. Um, so we're talking about fuel gas burning appliances um, that could pause um, HVAC units. Some units produce their uh, heating or cooling. The, the cooling especially, you know, those coils will produce condensate. But 
If you're running uh, the lines to take the condensate, the water that's produced from there, to some place of disposal, three quarter inches internal diameter. 19. To allow connection of a pressure measuring instrument, a T fitting with one capped opening shall be installed not more than 10 pipe diameters downstream of an MP regulator. This is where it was good. We went over what MP means. So let's describe what they're talking about. You know, I got to figure that in the city of New York, if you're running gas piping at all, you are a plumber. So I'm going to talk to you like your plumbers. And you know immediately what I'm referring to. Okay, uh, the water meter setup. Once again, here we are in the cellar, grade, the water main comes in, right? We have our, uh, we have one valve, right? We have, uh, let's see, uh, I don't know, what do, you, what do we want to put? Uh, you want to put a fish trap? Sure, why not? You want to put a meter? Sure, why not? And then after the meter, you always notice, guess what? We got the test T, right? The test T is going to be a valve, and then out of that valve, a nipple and a cap, right? So what's the test T for? Uh, testing. The water department comes out, and to make sure that the meter is reading the right amount of water, and we're measuring water in what? Cubic feet? Cubic feet, right? Cubic feet per hour. This has got to measure the right amount of cubic feet per hour. How are you going to do that? You put a test T. And now, from the test T, they run the water, they look at their instruments and say, okay, that looks right. This water meter is accurate, we're getting the right amount of money, okay? So, same thing with gas. They're going to want to test the accuracy of the regulator. The regulator, you know, um, they want to see uh, how much uh, gas is being sent through. You know, the medium pressure regulator has to do the job of taking high pressure to at least half a PSI. Is it doing it? I don't know. We gotta test it and see, right? So, once again, our seller, grade, service, we're coming in. We're gonna to go to the medium, uh, it should be a little, a circle is better. Medium pressure regulator right the MP regulator and let's see uh, more than okay a T fitting with one capped opening shall be installed so no cross T's the T fitting with one capped opening shall be installed no more than 10 pipe diameters from the regulator so in order to get for Con Ed or National Grid to get an accurate reading of the medium pressure regulator DT, the test T, cannot be, and it's going to be a T, not a cross T, cap cannot be more than 10 pipe diameters from the medium pressure regulator. No more than 10. So if this is 2 inch pipe, 2 inches the pipe diameter, and we can go no more than 10 pipe diameters, 2 times 10 is 20, we can't go more than 20 inches from the MP regulator, okay? Now, that involved a little bit of math, um, so I doubt that would be a question. You're never gonna get a question that asks you to figure out, you know, requires you to do any kind of computation like we did here. I mean, looks basic, but still computation. I told you there's no math on the test, so don't worry about, oh, you gotta figure out how far this is. What you do need to know, and once again, numerology, it can't be more than 10. Doesn't matter what the diameter of the piping is, this test T cannot be any more than 10 pipe diameters from the medium pressure regulator. And what did I say about upstream, downstream? It's like we're not going to get away from it. That they love those words. No more than 10 pipe diameters downstream of the MP regulator. Downstream. This is the flow downstream so this test t is downstream of the medium pressure regulator 
just like the test T on our water meter setup is after the meter.